knew that, you know, various places, uh, overloading is really helpful, right? You want plus to work on both integers and floats. So, or times. So you want to be able to define the square of X is X times X, but then, oh, wait, which times is that? And you know, what if you describe, takes a function that, that takes in three numbers and returns three squares, that's actually defining eight functions, right? Because each of those could be an integer and a float. So that was a problem. And uh, type classes were a way that would solve that problem. Did you, uh, so this was in, in the context of Haskell already, right? They came up in the context of Haskell. That's correct. So we were designing Haskell and we, you know, with the idea is, okay, we're, we're doing a lazy functional language. Let's use the standard solution for this problem. Oh, wait, there isn't one. <laughs> Back then, did you already had an idea of how it would uh, inter, how it would work together with the notion of modules and how it was being done in Haskell? Because nowadays it's, it's not that they're kind of like dual, like not dual, but you can implement modules with type classes kind of and vice versa, right? It's, what I'm getting at the heart here is, the, is this contention between Haskell and ML, where ML, they really focus on doing modules extremely well and Haskell have really good type classes, right? Uh, did you already have an idea of this contention when you were coming up with, with this notion? No, but uh, Dave McQueen wrote a very nice paper early on making exactly the contrast that you're making. No, I, I just wanted to cope with overload. And, and the fact that that then lent itself to algebra and lent itself to reading, to, uh, to reasoning, was just very fortunate.